Hello, everybody. This is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Welcome to this Wednesday night Bible study for the Church of the Eternally Secure. And tonight uh, we are having a special subject because today is Halloween, October 31st. It's also my mother's, my late mother's birthday. <laughs> How do you like to have a birthday on Halloween and everybody connect those two things together? <laughs> Every Halloween, of course, it makes me remember my wonderful mother. Um, so we're going to talk about Halloween tonight. We're going to talk about like uh, the, the the history of Halloween, Halloween, and uh, Halloween in America, and also what what position should we have on Halloween based upon uh, all of us who uh, rely on the Bible for uh, for our truth. Uh, so, but with me tonight, I'm very happy to have Brother Jason Cripps from uh, True Story Live. And uh, so let me ask him to take a minute to say hi to everybody and introduce yourself. Just tell everybody what your channel is doing. Sure. Hello. I'm glad to be here. My name is Jason Cripps, and I am part of True Story Live, as Brother Luke mentioned. And uh, Matthias from uh, Talking Doctrine is on there a lot. And uh, we're, we just moved over to YouTube from Blog Talk Radio and have had a lot of uh, positive feedback from that. And uh, what I like to do, what I like to say as far as TSL is, is it's uh, a gap ministry. Um, I, I like to think that uh, I'm, I'm called to stand in the gap between believers and unbelievers and also uh, in believers to try to, um, with, with God's work, of course, try to reduce some of the division and backbiting and, and hatred. And in fact, um, that's one of the reasons why I like your channel so much, because your your three tenets that you use, your pillars, if you will, uh, are perfect. And uh, I, I like to follow those as well, the, the same tenets also that Matthias follows. Uh, they've been very helpful to me personally, and I'm happy to be involved with anyone that uh, follows that pattern and uh, seeks uh, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Um, well, let me direct this uh, to the chat room. Uh, we've been trying to incorporate an idea to, to connect the panel dis uh, group that uh, that's uh, discussing the program. In this, in this case, it's uh, Brother Jason and myself tonight. Uh, Sister Renee is not going to be with us tonight, I don't think. Or maybe she will join us later on. I kind of doubt it because tonight is a, a, a night where uh, kids in America really look forward to celebrating this Halloween, and uh, she does that with her son. So they're out trick-or-treating, having a good time, and um, maybe if they finish it soon enough, she'll uh, she'll join us, but I doubt it. So uh, thankfully, I have uh, Brother Jason here has agreed to, to join me tonight, and uh, we figure since it is uh, Halloween, it's, why not talk about Halloween? Um, let me... Uh, I want to have somebody in the chat room kind of be like an, an intermediary between us, Jason and myself, and the chat room. Um, so if anybody wants to volunteer to do that, I can give you the uh, the link to join the panel. But primarily what you're going to do is paying close attention to the chat room and uh, passing on any questions. But uh, what we can also do is if someone has a question, or a point relevant to the, the, the discussion, just put them in all caps, and because uh, I can see the chat room. If it's something relevant to the conversation that you want to bring to our attention, or if it's a question, put it in all caps, just shout at me that way, and then I'll be able to notice it right away, okay? All right, um, so I guess the first and most important thing for us to talk about tonight is, um, uh, you know, Brother Jason, you and I are Christians, and uh, I believe that most, maybe all, of all the people in our chat room and the viewing audience are probably also Christians. And um, so we we have to ask the question, uh, how does ha Halloween fit into a Christian's life? Is it something that we should avoid? Or as uh, our brother Jason Jack, he, he he's not available to, for the program tonight because he's with his 
children on Halloween. Uh, Sister Renee is with her son James doing Halloween. There's a lot of the brethren and the sistren. <laughs> I don't know what the right word for that really is, but uh, that uh, that in, enjoy it. If you have young children and they 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 look forward to this. Uh, you, you can take them out and, and participate. So the question is, 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 is this something that we should be embracing and enjoying, or should we be uh, vigorously speaking out against it? And uh, we're going to go through that, but I've got some Bible verses that I, I want to read first, and then we can discuss these things. Uh, you need someone to convey, RL says, are you saying you need someone to convey what the questions from the chat are? Uh, yes. Brother Mike, uh, Radical Liberty Fire. RL is Radical Liberty. <laughs> I like it. Radical yeah. Liberty. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. Brother, uh, if you could, if a question comes from the chat room about the conversation, uh, make sure we get our attention. Or if the person has a question, if you put all caps, I think I'll be able to uh, uh, catch it. But for now, let's, let's talk about some verses. Uh, I've got a, a couple of verses here that I would say uh, support the viewpoint that there's nothing wrong with us participating in Halloween if we want to. And then I got some other verses that some people would use to argue that we should avoid it completely. Let's talk about the pro or the, the freedom verses here first, brother. Uh, Colossians 2, uh, 16 says, Let no man therefore judge you in meat, or in drink, or in respect of a, a, holy, a holy day, or of the new moon, or of the Sabbath days. And of course, Colossians, written by the Apostle Paul. <clears throat> um, brother, um, I think this verse here, uh, it, it, we, we need to understand that um, um, Paul is, I don't know if he can make it, without putting the word Halloween in there, <laughs> he's pretty much clearly stated any holy day, any holiday you could call it, holy yeah. is holiday, right? Yeah. Uh, so any any holiday that people celebrate, they're free to do it. We should not judge people's holidays. So how do you understand that verse? Do you want me to post it in their little private chat area or do you have it in front of you? I have it. I've got it. I've got a tab uh, open. The Bible tab. Uh, no problem at all. Um, I I see it the the way you seem to see it, uh, and that covers all the other holidays. So it would include uh, Christmas as well. So we don't have to do a Christmas show this year then, because you you just covered it right there. <laughs> it 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 seems pretty clear to me that um, we have liberty in Christ uh, to either celebrate a holiday or not celebrate a holiday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I remember talking to a brother uh, a couple of years ago on Skype and we were getting along quite well. And, and uh, then he, he decided that he wanted to uh, tell me his position on holidays. Oh, he, he, he basically included all holidays, even his children's birthdays. Mm -hmm. And he said in their, their house, they don't celebrate anything, not even their birthdays. And he was, um, and I pointed out this verse and, uh, and the other verse we're going to go to next to him. And, and, and he, he started hyperventilating and getting real agitated and voice got louder. And uh, he, uh, it, it's very unfortunate when people, uh, um, we were talking about this before we started. And of course, this is one of the, 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 the tenets of, of uh, the ministry that we do here and also in talking doctrine is that people should be uh, allow liberty to yes. other believers about pretty much everything except for the core doctrines of Christianity in that in those core doctrines we have to be dogmatic on those things yes we can't compromise those things but in everything else we need liberty and in this case Paul even specifically tells us let no man judge that uh, if someone wants to celebrate a holiday or not yeah it seems clear Seems perfectly clear to me. Yeah, let me see. Is anybody in the chat room uh, have any thoughts on that particular verse there? Okay, we we're talking about uh, Colossians 2, verse 16. So to me, I, I, if, if there was nothing else in the Bible that we could relate to this, 
that would be enough to me to tell everybody, do what you want. Uh, I'm not going to judge you. I'm not going to uh, uh, criticize you. Uh, and I'm free. I'm free to celebrate uh, the, the, the Christmas, uh, you know, uh, even though that we could say a lot about that, you know, is, is the date correct? Is it commercialized? And all the things we can say about Halloween too, that we can certainly find fault in it. And we'll, we'll discuss sure. all those things, but uh, I'm free. Just as sister Renee is free to take her son out tonight as brother Jason Jack's taking his uh, children out tonight. Right. And uh, we're, we're free to do that. Uh, the, the next verse brother is first Corinthians six twelve. Six twelve. <clears throat> it says, um, all things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Okay, give me one. You go first. Give me your thoughts on that verse, brother. Uh, I, lo I, I love it. I, I will not be under the power of any. Um, because what happens is when people really, really take a stand against this and they, they do, like you were saying, your friend with the birthdays and they're not doing anything. And then when you're even having a discussion about it, you were describing how his reaction, how, how upset he seemed to get, that's a power over him. The, mm -hmm. the denying of the holidays and standing and, and thinking that this is, this is what I feel like I need to do is I need to rail against, uh, not only the holidays, but people that celebrate them. And even to the point, some people will accuse uh, uh, brethren uh, for, you know, having a Christmas tree or whatever. In this case, we're talking about Halloween. So if you were to take your kids, even I've, I've heard people rail against those that um, have their church that have the, the junk in the trunk uh, stuff, you know, or the, where uh, parents park their cars. And instead of going trick or treat in the neighborhood, they, you know, set up little, little shops of candy and the kids can walk around the church parking lot. And I've heard people get almost frothing at the mouth talking about that, that they should have no fellowship with, I guess, candy in your trunk on, on that particular holiday. Mm -hmm. Trunk or treat. Yes. Thank you, RL. I couldn't think of the exact word, not, not junk in the trunk. That's a, that's a different colloquialism. I think, uh, trunk or treat is correct. Well, um, let me look at some of these thoughts here in the chat room. Uh, sure. Uh, I like got questions, opinion on this. Uh, Lamida Ahava. Okay, tell us what they are. And uh, Hendrix says, as a Christian, I don't do Halloween because I eat all the candy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to give me a Bible verse to brother Hendrix uh, Hendrix says I've got, some, I've got some Bible verses I'm going to go into that uh, that people use to uh, tell us uh, to avoid these, these things but uh, um, you just want to eat all the candy huh he says he yeah. dressed up as an out of work Vincent price <laughs> an out of work Vincent price mm -hmm. remember uh, him uh, yeah I do remember Vincent price yeah. I remember yeah. very much I loved him he was yeah. uh, 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 yeah, so many great movies he was in. Um, and RL says, my vote is for liberty and Christ. Uh, yeah, and adopted son of heaven says, as long as we aren't participating in satanic stuff, right. we should be okay going door to door for some candy. And a Christian wouldn't be doing the uh, satanic high holy day things such as uh, blood uh, sacrifices or kidnapping children or any of the hor horrible things that do go on. Mm -hmm. um, those to me are the things you have to be more careful of than it being a problem that you take your kids tr trick or treating or you carve a pumpkin and put a candle in it and put it out on your porch. Yeah. Well, let me, let me do something here real quick here. Cause you know, this is an occasion that we're supposed to have costumes here. So first, uh, let me, uh, tell me if you think you can tell me what this is here. Okay, it'll take a second here for me to do it. But uh, I didn't go to the store and get any costumes, so this is this is all I can do. Let me see. This usually works pretty well. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, I want everybody to tell you, tell me, what do you think I am? What a, this costume I'm wearing here. Let me see. The office. <laughs> okay, what, what am I? Hey, chat room, tell me, what do you think I am? Mike W. says, the office mummy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. that, was, that was pretty good. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you what I am. This is like the natural man. Ooh. <laughs> Our natural state is this ugliness, sinfulness. And then, of course, because of Jesus... All the sin is gone. Beautiful. Yeah. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank, Thank you. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, I'm so glad. I'm so glad that uh, I don't deserve it, but I accept it, and I'm grateful. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Uh, chat room. Uh, uh, leather face. Yeah, that's what you think I am. Okay, well, that's the best I can do as far as participating in the costume uh, part of this uh, this evening. Um, I don't have to have a costume. My name my name is uh, is perfect for Halloween. I, yeah, I don't have to yeah. dress up as anything. Every Halloween, I'm 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 me. Yeah. Well, first of all, you're Jason. That's correct. The star of Halloween. That's and right. Crips isn't yeah. crypt like a, is it where you bury someone in the crypt. Yes, it's a different spelling, but yes, yeah. uh, I had I had uh, when the there there's a show called uh, uh, Tales from the Crypt, and um, I had a friend that used to walk up to me and Tales from the Crypts used to say that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you got uh, you got actually you got a very scary name when you start to think about it. Yeah, adopted son has a question. I had a question a little off topic regarding something I heard. But when Jesus returns and reigns on the earth for a thousand years, I had a question about that. Well, why don't you send that in to me, and we'll put it, take that to the Sunday program, Adopted Son of Heaven, please. Uh, we want to try to stay on this topic uh, tonight as much as possible. And if we run out of things to say, we'll change topics. But we've got a lot of ground to cover on this uh, subject of Halloween tonight. Okay, so we've got two verses uh, that we we've gone over here that are they don't require a lot of teaching a lot of interpretation uh, they're, they're the kind of verses that I believe that we should really uh, rely on I've always said that if you want to form a doctrine you don't find ambiguous verses that everybody's arguing about the meaning you find verses that are so clear-cut that that uh, no one can dispute what it means and uh, so in, in uh, Colossians 2, let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of any holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days or of Halloween or of Christmas or of Easter or of anything else. Of course, I added that, but that's what this is saying. Any holy day. Yeah. So we, let's not judge each other. If people want to celebrate these holidays, they're, they're, they can do it. Don't judge them. And then, of course... 1 Corinthians 6, 12 says, all things are lawful unto me. Okay, so you, you don't consider anything, doing all these things as sinful and, and forbidden. All things are not expedient, though. Well, just because you do some things doesn't mean that it's going to be beneficial for you. It's, it's not necessarily a wise thing to do, but it's not uh, unlawful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. So if we do decide to participate in any of these uh, holidays that people question, uh, I think it is important that we don't uh, let it control us. Uh, mm -hmm. I, have, I have a friend that has an annual uh, uh, Halloween party that's going, that got it going on tonight. I, I won't be going to it this year, but they are so elaborate. Their front yard, their backyard, everything in their house, all the food, everything is related to Halloween. And the woman that hosts it, she dresses up as a witch, and her costume is so elaborate that you would think that a Hollywood um, makeup artist did it, put, made her up. Yeah, some people really are amazing at what they do as far as these costumes are concerned, and I think part parts of that are fun. I don't particularly get into it myself, but um, I, a lot of times I enjoy seeing that. I enjoy seeing kids dressed up and you know cute costumes and stuff. That doesn't bother me at all. 
Yeah, yeah, and I think I think that the, the kids particularly are. Uh, uh, I'll tell you, some of my fondest memories as, as a little boy were Halloween nights. I looked forward to it so much every every year, and there were particular houses, particular houses that we were always real anxious to get to that house because they always had the best treat. One house always had a popcorn ball. And uh, we just had so much fun doing it. And uh, there was nothing, uh, you know, uh, evil about it, except it was just a, uh, and, and it wasn't even a scary thing. We knew it was just, even as a child, we knew it was just a fun thing to do, to wear costumes, but we weren't really connecting the dots uh, as far as any kind of evil interpretation of it all. Uh, Strawberry Shortcake says, uh, I dressed up as a skeleton to give candy in my building just for fun. I don't take it too seriously. Okay. Good. That's yeah, good. That's the thing is uh, we can, as it says in that verse, as long as you don't let it take power uh, over you. Yeah. I think Christmas is, a. Uh, again, I don't want to keep going back to that, but there are some parallels there. And I think some people do let Christmas get control of them. Mm -hmm. You know, and all the spending and going into debt and all that, because it, it that's way more commercial and it's a bigger holiday, in my opinion, than Halloween. Yeah. But you could spend a bunch of money on candy and throwing a party and I you could you could let it get away from me a little bit. There's Renee. Yeah. Hey, Renee. Renee, if, if you are available and you want the link, uh, let me know. I'll send it to you. I don't know if you're still busy with James, but uh uh, if you want to stay in the chat room, that's fine. If you want the link, I'll mail it to you. Okay. I'm so I, Renee. I, I'm so okay. glad she's back and and starting to feel better. I've been blessed to watch her videos come out like a machine lately. Um, it's it's a wonderful thing, and, and I just wanted to say that if she doesn't come on or comes on, whatever, either way, I just want to. I'm just very grateful that she's now, back or back around. She she says just got home with my son Einstein. <laughs> and she sent, uh, she sent me a, um, uh, a text message with a picture attached of her son, Joseph Einstein. It was hilarious. She, she said, send her the link, uh, Brother Luke. Okay. All right. I'll do that here. Let me get it. We'll get this Halloween anti-party started. <laughs> it's not an anti-party. Just joking. Let me... Uh, okay, brother. It takes me a second to get all these screens down and go to my uh, email. Sure. Oh, well. I'll, I'll do something for Mike W. If you don't mind. Yeah. Go ahead. You want me to do um, in the voice of the crypt keeper from the show that we were discussing, you know, tales from the crypt. There's a little, little voice for Mike W. If he's still around. We can have a little fun. Can't we? Okay. <laughs> it's a liberty. Okay. I can't wait. And RL, RL sent me a, a, a email saying he would uh, take the link if if, he, if we wanted to see it. So uh, Renee and Brother Mike, RL, I sent you, emailed you both the link. So uh, go ahead and join us. We'd love to have you participate in this conversation. Uh, okay, so I imagine they'll be joining us here. Let me go to these verses here that are uh, uh, people can use to argue the other side. Uh, Deuteronomy 18, verse 10 through 12. There shall not be found among you any one that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. I better copy this and put it in the space there. Control Z. Um, okay, so uh, I tr tried to prepare for this um, study tonight on the subject of Halloween. So I watched a bunch of videos and I, I saw some videos from Christians that were using some verses to say, argue that uh, this is satanic holiday and that we should not be participating. And this is a verse they, they would use to uh, indicate to us that we should not be 
participating in that. How, does, does that apply to us in this holiday right now? You think in any way, brother? Uh, say the question again. I didn't. I didn't quite get it. Uh, this verse here in Deuteronomy I just read. You think that no. we can apply this verse uh, to justify arguing against Christians participating in Halloween? No, no. These to to me these are actual occurrences where it, it, it it's a real thing that someone does. All the things that are mentioned are, are when people do that uh, as a practice, not pretending. It doesn't apply to anything that's fantasy or, or like, I mean, I hate to say it. There's a lot of people, but Harry Potter, for instance, is not the same as all the things that are mentioned in the Bible. It's a fantasy book. I'm, I'm not arguing that, you know, it's, it's a great thing for everyone to read or anything. I'm just saying that it's, that, um, it isn't what these things are. These things are real practices. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hi, brother RL. Hey, do you want me to call you Brother Mike tonight or stick with RL? Uh, Mike, Mike's fine. Hey, okay, Mike. Uh, listen, uh, when there were just two of us, we didn't need to mute our mics. But if there's going to be three or four of us, we're going to have to do that because I know that it's going to affect the audio quality. So, uh, Brother Mike, uh, why don't you, uh, since you just joined us, let me give you a, a, a moment here to give your thoughts what we've been talking about so far. Yeah. Uh, hi. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I hope I sound okay. Um, yeah, I, I lean on the side of liberty. Uh, I with those verses that we went that you went through, you know, it makes it pretty clear that um, when it comes to things as far as uh, these religious practices, that those are not a thing that we're under. Those are not a thing that we're bound by. But it's a matter of conscience. So it kind of it, it kind of ends up being like it's wrong it's as, it's only as wrong as you think it is so if but the irony is that the bondage that you're you know being put under the power of the subjection of something comes from the rule that says that you know you don't have that liberty so it's actually you're under the subjection of it uh, by having a rule that makes it not okay, because otherwise, liberty is never, never to be under subjection. You're not when you have liberty, you don't. You're not under subjection. You're not under the power of anything. You're under liberty. So, the way that you end up being under that power and being bound by something is when you have that rule in place, and then you say, you know, well, you can't dress up and have fun, and and I mean, I know that there are origins that people say that you know, go back what Halloween was, but the people walking around tonight are not doing that. They're, they're, they're dressing up, they're having fun, having parties, eating candy, you know, maybe some things are a little less innocent, but for the most part, it's just, the point is to have fun. And I just don't see how having fun, I, that's not in opposition to God to, to want to have fun and maybe dress up and pretend to be something you're not for, a few hours. Well, um, did you catch this part I read in Deuteronomy, Brother Mike? Uh, uh, it specifically uh, names um, uh, passing through fire, like fire walking, uh, divination, observer of times. I'm not sure what that is. Enchanter or a witch or a charmer consulted with familiar spirits or a wizard or a necromancer. Uh, so uh, nice. it seems clear to me that practicing those things, we, not, we are not to practice those things. But pretending that you're a witch, is that, is that something that we should uh, tolerate or, and say, oh, don't worry about it, you're just pretending? or um, Because we know what we... The Bible specifically says, don't practice witchcraft. Um, so are we, uh, are we giving people any kind of um, uh, maybe too much, too much liberty because they're pretending to do something that the Bible specifically says don't do? Um, I mean, that's how someone who would argue that, hey, Halloween's bad. We, Christians should not be involved in it. Nobody should be involved in it. But this verse here is one of their support verses for those people. So if they're just pretending, uh, are you supporting in a way, even though it's just all for fun and pretending? 
uh, Jason or Mike? I like what Mike said. It depends, and and I feel very strongly about this. It depends on what uh, what it means to the person that's doing it. So the person that's dressing up as a witch, and in their mind, they're not in any way, shape, or form doing a ritual. They don't secretly love Satan and say that they love Jesus, et cetera, et cetera. They're doing it because their kids are dressing up and they want her to dress up. And the daughter said, hey, mommy, why don't we both dress like witches or whatever? Um, it's totally fantasy. If there's no part of that person that means it in any way, shape, or form to be a, a celebration of dark forces, then how uh, can it be bad? Um and I'm sure we're going to talk about sometimes where it's a stumbling block for somebody else. Cause that is a, that is a topic that we need to be aware of, you know, where someone else is, uh, caused issues by us living in Liberty. Um, when they have a real problem with it. In other words, if I, if I'm dressing up as a witch and I've got a, a brother that, um, doesn't celebrate anything, including his birthday, I'm not going to dress up as a witch and go over and ring his doorbell. You know what I mean? I'm not going to go flaunt it around in his face that I have the liberty to dress up like a witch or in my case, a warlock, I guess. Now I, I personally have no desire for that. I don't, if I was going to dress up as something, what I've dressed up the most as literally is just bought up. I have a hockey mask and I wear just regular clothes and put the hockey mask on when I, when I have gone to a couple parties or, uh, uh gatherings and stuff from work, work folks and things like that. Really, really simple. I don't put a whole lot of money into it, and it works out perfectly every time. I did carry an axe one year. I put the mask on, and I carried an axe around with me, and that's it. I'm sorry. I forgot to. Oh, oh, my microphone was turned off. You missed my laughing at what you were saying, <laughs> that you are carrying an axe around. Was it a real axe? Yeah, a real axe. Yep. yep. Uh, that but would be kind of scary. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's a little scary. I'm, really I'm, a, I'm a big guy. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Um, I said something. Yeah, that... I agree. I agree with everything that Brother Jason just said. Um, as far as um, how it really is just a matter of of the way that you're perceiving the whole thing, and um, oh man, now I can't even remember what I was going to say. <laughs> Um, but as far as what was uh, Paul was writing, was saying that, you know, an idol is nothing. And, and when he was talking about, uh, you know, the meat sacrificed to idols, this is what I, I now I remember. He was saying with the meat sacrificed to idols was that the person who actually has the weaker conscience is the person that is not OK with it. And so on that, if we were to ex extrapolate that out. You know, it's it's actually the person with the weaker conscience that has the problem with Halloween. But at the same time, he said that one of the things about exercising liberty is not to be the cause of stumbling to your brother, which uh, hi everybody, which I think was <laughs> good to see you. Sorry, I was late. Don't be so sad. Just because I can't hear him. Coming. Where's my sound? Because <laughs> my my sound's not turned up. Oh. There we go. Okay, now I can hear you. All right. We're going to, you know, people like to judge us by appearance. I'm a harmless, sweet little baby. A, a big-headed crying baby. <laughs> and I'm cranky. And I'm um, package delivery man. Yes, he's a box. Why, why doesn't Jace, uh, I mean, uh, James have his uh, Einstein costume still on? Oh, he, that, the mustache was bugging his lip. So I ripped it off and I was like, okay. And his eyebrows, the big bushy eyebrows were bugging him. So we took them off. But uh, if he ever was, wants to be an actor, he'll have to get used to that. Oh, boy. <laughs> I, 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 I said, if there's anything on the planet that you could do besides that, that'd be great. Do what? <laughs> Acting. As you know, how many years I did that? It's like this. Uh, the only time you can be an actor is if there's nothing else you could possibly do and be happy. That's the reason. Yeah. I'm happy. What brother do I got there? What brother? I know your voice. We got RL and uh -huh. brother Mike, and, and we got brother Jason Cripps. Uh, Jason Cripps. Okay, Boy, there yeah. we go. There's that deep voiceover acting and i liked your <laughs> the crypt keeper 
That was good. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, sister, what we've what we've done so far, we talked about Paul saying uh, don't judge anybody who wants to uh, practice any holiday and so on. Yep. And also Paul's statement that, hey, uh, we have uh, it, it, everything's lawful, but not everything's beneficial or expedient. So we use those verses to uh, say, look, it's clearly stated that it's not ambiguous at all yep. that we are free to practice Halloween or Christmas or any of these things here. Um, but then Halloween uh, has zero religious meaning to me. It's based on the Celtic Samhain. It's, it's spelled Sam Hain, but it's pronounced Samhain. And uh, the Catholic Church tried to turn it into a religious holiday by making it all Saints Day where they're worshiping dead saints. So I don't do none of that. I just I don't I don't get condemned over anything and I don't condemn other people. I just don't. I got wrapped up, swayed to and fro with every wind of doctrine when I first came back to the faith about 12 years ago. And I was so in bondage. I was so miserable. I couldn't be with my family at Christmas. And it was just, just sucked the joy. I was like, that's so stupid. I know it's not his birthday. I taught my son it's not Jesus's real birthday, but we're just going to go ahead and celebrate the birth of our savior, period, and have time to spend with our, our, our family. So I don't get condemned over any of it. I don't. I don't bow down to my Christmas tree. Uh, I like what Brother Daniel said the uh, a couple weeks ago. He said, I am so secure in Christ. I could wear a Halloween mask, sit under a Christmas tree and eat an Easter egg. And, and I'm secure, you know. It While really, writing a Valentine card. It, it, that's right. And and <laughs> if, uh, if it offends a brother, now I won't, I, I don't want to offend them. I wouldn't be a stumbling block to them. But blessed is the man who does not condemn that which he allows. And I, I'm not condemned over anything. I just feel free. Now, there's some things that I don't settle right with me. There's certain sick movies and stuff I just can't watch. There's certain music with lyrics that's anti-Christ. I just can't hear. But I'm not in bondage. It's just something that doesn't feel good. So that's what I go by. Am I grieving the Holy Spirit? Ooh, you know, that's, that's my yardstick. And I don't think anything I do in the flesh like this, as long as uh, whatsoever is not of faith is sin. And if I'm doing something against my own conscience, it's sin to me. But I just I don't feel uh, condemned at all. And of course, the Lord, Jim, please, you almost got me in the eyeball. Um, and whoa, what is that? You got that sharp edge. That hurt. Um, uh, in any case, I forgot what I was going to say. But uh, I don't I don't get condemned over it. Uh, and oh, the Lordship people would just say, oh, you got a conscious seared with a hot iron. No, I don't. I just don't get all religious and uptight. That's all. How about y'all? Uh, we're, we're all in agreement about the freedom that we have. Uh, and uh, uh, I was emphasizing that our doctrines should not be based upon ambiguous verses, but on the verses that are clear cut and those verses by Paul there, uh, there were, we covered, uh, let me see, we covered uh, uh, Colossians 2.16 and we covered 1 Corinthians 6.12 and those two verses are clear cut. There, you, you, No one's gonna debate the meaning of the verses. So that's what you can uh, trust. And then there's other verses in the Bible that are ambiguous that everybody's arguing about what it means and, and that you don't you should not form doctrine based on ambiguous verses however in researching this subject this week uh so i learned a little bit more about it i uh i found that there are some christians that use some verses to argue that we should not have anything to do with this holiday and that's what i'm we're going over next uh the next verse i want to bring up here um let me see, is um, 1 Corinthians 10, 20 and 21. It says, uh, but I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not have that ye should have fellowship with devils. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and the table of devils. So, um, I think they have to read a lot into that. Let me ask uh, Brother Jesus. Here's Einstein. Sorry, Einstein just came in. He wanted to say hello to everyone. Yeah. 
Oh, cool. Cool. He yeah. said E equals MC squared. Einstein equals much candy squared. Excellent. It looks like I have a surgical mask on and not a mustache. Yeah, it covers his whole face. I'm sorry. He wanted to put that That's on. All right. The yeah. kids the kids have a fall festival. It's not Halloween yeah. where they dress up like book characters at their class. So instead of doing Halloween, they just do something that's like a, a celebration of books. And so they dress up as a book character. That's what that's all about. I am Mothman. <laughs> Sorry, oh, about, Sorry about that. Doing, uh, I am now Mothman. You get out of here with that. <laughs> Uh, sister, all the things you said that you're not uh, um, condemned or you don't feel condemned over, but I know that you did have a black cat, and that's going to really, that could be a serious problem. Well, all cat. witches, all witches that are Satanists when they wear their black hoodies and make hand symbols, you know, like me, we have to have the obligatory black feline. Yeah. That, that's a must. I, I cannot be a proper satanic Jezebel witch whore. Without them, so and I, you're made of wood. I, and yes, because I weigh the same as a duck, which means I'm made of wood, and I float. And so they need to burn me, or make a bridge out of me, because I'm wood and I float. So I'm a witch. That's and the logic of people. Burn her! Uh, Build a bridge out of her. Well, what else floats? Very small rocks. <laughs> She's a witch. The problem we have with um, YouTube. And our enemies on YouTube, and when I say our enemies, I'm just talking about the people who are the nitpickers, the fault finders, the, the people who try to uh, parse every word we say and, and uh, every screenshot that they can get. When we say something like that in jest, they can take it out of context, make your video and, and say, Sister Renee is proclaiming she's a witch. See, there's the proof. That's how dishonest. Yep. And they will. They'll take a clip of something that I'm saying in sarcasm and put it up out of context and say, that's what I say. Yeah. And then they've done that and then put scripture next to it. That refutes me to show what a false prophet I am. It's very, very mean and dishonest, like you said. And uh, I don't spend my time exposing these channels. I, I just don't, I don't <sighs> feel the need to look at every little thing. If a brother or sister, has the right Jesus and the right gospel. I mean, let them do their thing. I don't have to agree with everything, you know, but uh, there was something earlier. Golly. Oh, he was talking about J uh, uh, Harry Potter. You know, people need to look beyond the surface. Yes. It's, it's bad to uh, uh, promote witchcraft, but CS Lewis was a born again Christian and he did the Chronicles of Narnia and, you know, um, uh, um, Aslan, the, the lion, he represented Jesus that died for them, you know, and JK Rowling is a Christian. I think she used to be Catholic and became a Christian. And the Harry Potter stories are actually supposed to be about good versus evil. It's supposed to be how good overcomes evil. So she made a story. Remember it's fantasy. Uh, of of a magical world uh, that just promotes good always overcomes evil that that's all it was i think people really read too much into these things uh meanwhile they'll overlook something that is really promoting a satanic agenda because it looks okay on the outside uh but they'll look at something like oh it's about witchcraft so it's of the devil and they're not safe because they don't use discernment you know what i mean yeah, like angel cards in the church, for instance. Yes! Oh, Having my God. Angel cards. Any angel that would respond to an occult calling is a fallen one. There are no, no angel will ever come through or take orders from a human being. They are in service to God alone. Amen. Any kind of, we used to do angel circles where we called upon the angels of the north, south, east, and west and call them by name. Thinking the good angels were showing up. They're fallen entities. You know, again, like you said, they're looking at the outside. Oh, it's angels and look how good they are. Or Satan comes as an angel of light. You know, they can't see it. They we're look for me in a black hoodie instead of <laughs> it's just silly. Yeah, a black a black hoodie with a black cat. Sorry, and, brother. And it was rain, it was snowing outside, and my hair was all gross, and I kept it on because I didn't want anybody to see my hair all messed up. I mean, uh, they are that 
insane. And like Luke was talking earlier, I'll say, uh, hey, um, I suggest you don't read such and such apocryphal book because it's completely against scripture. Renee said you shouldn't read the Bible. Renee said you shouldn't read. Or if I say uh, uh, repentance does not mean to turn from sin. You don't have to turn from any sin to be saved because if you have to turn from any, that means you have to turn from all. And then uh, they'll say, Renee says, don't repent of your sins. Renee says, repenting from sin is witchcraft. No, I said the doctrine of lordship salvation and repentance being changed into another meaning is witchcraft because it means to twist. It's from the word wick or wicca, which means to twist like the wick of a candle. So they are twisting scripture, which is witchcraft, but they will completely miss the point. Ooh, a black Crazy. cat. Oh, How yes. Spooky. Here's my demon cat, Rigel. It's Oh, he was named after a star, so I, I must be evil. A demon Spoopy. star. Yeah. I, think, uh, uh, I, I just wanted to mention that because I could imagine uh, after you said that about being a witch, that um, the people who are scrutinizing every word we say, that, that someone will jump on that and try to use it against you. It's, it's sad that we have... Uh, so many people who are professing believers that we know that uh, they just they're dishonest people. And I'm, it's, it's the only thing conclusion I can come to be, because they were purposely misrepresenting what you say and what you do. So it's sad. I don't want to I don't want the program sidetracked and going off on a different subject now. But I, I can see that as a possible uh, ha thing happening. Um, like the my right volume, I turned my input volume up. Because some people were saying they couldn't hear me, but mm -hmm. now some people say I'm too loud. So I don't know what else to do. I put it on a way where people can hear me now. If I'm too loud, I, I'm sorry. I don't yell. I'm just animated. You know, I just let me know if I get too loud. Okay. Yeah. Right now it sounds like a good volume. Uh, but this verse, I'm going to ask Brother Jason here. Uh, the, the verse I read, 1 Corinthians 10, 20 and 21, uh, particularly the part of it that says, um, um, you, uh, you, you should not, should have fellowship with devils. Uh, that we can't have any fellowship with devils. Now, I don't know how they could use that verse to argue against Halloween, brother. I mean, how how can they possibly cite that verse to say Christians shouldn't practice Halloween, brother Jason? I I don't know, but that's real devils, though. That's the thing. It's real devils, not people dressed up as devils. That's real devils. So if you look at verse 21, this is what I wanted to focus on. Verse 21 says, you cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and the table of devils. What is the Lord's table? Communion is a good example. So a good modern day example is someone that goes to communion on uh, Sunday. And then during the week, they also go to um, a satanic ritual. That's what that's about is you can't do both. You, it's not about you take communion on Sunday and then, oh, it's Halloween once a year. And so I'm going to let my kids dress up and have a jack-o'-lantern and, and but, uh, on the porch. You know what, dude, Jason? People forget what was going on in the first century. These people literally went to temples where there was an idol. They would offer blood sacrifices to it via animal and sometimes even human. That's why you can't make your son or daughter pass through the fire. They'd burn their children alive to Molech and Kamash of Moab. Uh, and uh, they had temple prostitution, believing sexual union brought you closer to the gods. So people forget, because it's not a practice done today, that they were literally going into temples and offering sacrifices to demons, to devils, because the idol only represents that devil. And so they would make little ones to go into their house. And this giant one in the temple that they believed the spirit of that entity was present in when they called upon him. All right. So they forget that this was literally going on, man. You know, and, and they try to make these things apply to now. And you, you you can't make this say anything other than what it's saying. Over in Acts 19, we know there were saved people that had kept their sorcery scrolls two years after they got saved. But when they saw the visible 
power of the living God, they feared and burned their very expensive scrolls, realizing yeah. that those demons had nothing compared to the living God. So uh, it's possible for a saved person to still be messing up and messing with dangerous, horrible occult things, sometimes out of ignorance and sometimes just out of sheer rebellion. And Christians are a bad target because if you open that door, they are waiting to pounce on you. They are waiting. Yeah, you know? people, people don't realize that some of those doors, and, and you would know from the from yes. the new age. Yes, okay, even so you, Reiki, when even you, healing like oh, Opono Ono or Reiki, that good healing energy, still not of God. Two right. powers. The power either comes from the living God or it comes from Satan. That's it. There's no That's gray it. line here. Yeah, you can make the line gray if you want to, but there really isn't a, a, a gray line. No, there isn't. There are only two sources of power. Obviously, sister, I'm, it's so always so helpful if when you or anybody directs us to the context of a verse. You know, you have to understand who is writing this. What is their mindset? What are the, what's the, the main point that they're trying to get across? Who is the audience? And all these things uh, are necessary if you're going to get the right understanding of the original intended meaning. Now, you can always take a verse like this and try to apply it to some future uh, group of people, and, 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 uh, but it, it wasn't intended for that at all. It's not talking about that at all. Let me get uh, Brother Mike's thoughts on those verses. Yeah, I've been I've been chomping, waiting to, to be able to get us in on this. And with what you're just saying there, Brother Luke, about the context, one thing that is, from my perspective, really irritating about the way the writings of Paul gets used is that Paul actually goes back and forth. He builds cases. He does all kinds of uh, rhetorical techniques. Sometimes he'll present a, he'll present a side, and then he'll refute that argument. And then another time, another thing that he'll do sometimes is he'll, he'll start with a premise and then he'll destroy that premise. And what I think is going on right here is that we're actually seeing the opposite side of the argument when he's saying uh, this bit about uh, that you can't eat of, of, of uh, you can't drink from the cup of the devils and from the, the table of the Lord, or I'm not sure how exactly his word uh, yeah you cannot drink from the cup of the lord and the cup of devils and and then he follows that up just right after that about all things are lawful to me but all things are not expedient all things are lawful to me but all things edify not uh and he says whatever is sold in the shambles start that eat asking no questions for conscience sake for the lord's or earth is the lord's and the fullness thereof i think that this is actually setting up the argument of why you can't do what he just said, which is that it's okay to be to eat meat sacrificed to idols. And here's the counter argument. And then he goes and he destroys that. And he says, they're, these things, they're, they don't even exist. They're not real. Uh, he says that the idol is nothing. There is no idol. They're, they're being sacrificed to a non-existent thing. It doesn't, it's not real. And so I think what he's actually saying is, that this is this is the the part that gets cherry picked out of it, but it's actually the opposite, the opposing argument that he's arguing against. Um, and I think that it's really important with the context of Paul's writings because he does this all the time and constantly when he he states the argument that he's about to destroy, and people quote that and say, "Well, Paul said this." No, he didn't. He actually said. Here's the argument I'm about to annihilate and destroy and tell you, let go of this. I disagree with you. See, he doesn't believe in actual literal demonic entities. When, G when God took out his judgment on Egypt, they were getting their power from literal satanic demonic entities. And he said that he was doing it to show up and disgrace the little G gods of Egypt. And they're, uh, when Paul does say in other verses and other places, I'll find it. He says they don't know what they're sacrificing to. They are sacrificing to devils. He didn't say they did not exist. He cast these literal devils out of the woman with the spirit of divination. So although an idol is nothing, what's an idol? It's nothing. There were spiritual entities that were represented by that idol. 
So it, it, I'm sorry, sir. I, I, I cannot agree with you that the devils don't exist and it's really nothing that they're sacrificing to nothing because he always says, um, principalities, powers, rulers of darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. These, these are literal uh, uh, spiritual entities that are, are, you know, stuck here. And uh, now uh, I get what you're saying. These things have no power, but they do have some. And you can see with Janice and Jambres, when they withstood Moses with their, uh, when Moses drop the uh the Aaron staff and it turned into a snake they did the same exact thing but god's snake devoured those two snakes and they were able to mimic uh god's miracles up until what was it the fourth or fifth um uh plague they were able to mimic it and then finally they're like hey this god's too powerful for us and so there are verses, I'd have to look them up. I did a study on this years ago, finding all of the places where it talks about other little gods. Um, and when uh, God is speaking to the council, the divine council, he says, hey, I, I, don't you know that ye are gods, but you will die like men. You will fall like princes. Mm -hmm. So he's speaking to literal, physical, spiritual entities here that people did worship and he broke up after the tower of Babel, like 70 or 72 different areas or nations that each one of these entities had power over. That's what the principalities are. So I have to disagree with you. It's clear in scripture that there are literal devils that uh, uh, people did sacrifice to. I'd like to talk about the broader point that uh, Brother R.L., Brother Mike uh, said, because the reason I'm applauding it is because what you're describing, Brother Mike, is, is what I did a, a playlist uh, on called Prosopopoeia. And I really believe that you are right. Now, in this particular case, I have to look at the, every, everything, all the verses in the context and, and see, uh, you know, what... what uh, more about uh, the, the details of that particular conversation. But the, the concept of prosopopoeia is, is exactly the point you were making that Paul often, or at least I'm, 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 I don't wanna say I'm certain, but I'm pretty confident that Romans chapter one and two is a perfect example of prosopopoeia, where Paul presents two sides of an argument. In other words, he's like saying, okay, the, the false teacher's not here with me right now, but let's pretend the false teachers here, here's their point of view, and now here's the correct point of view to, for you to compare. And uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a technique. Uh, uh, it's also sometimes called diatribe, but uh, I believe Paul did it in Romans 1 and 2. It may be in this case here, I don't know, I have to look at that, but uh, I, if, uh, Brother Mike, if, if you can cite many other examples of it, I think it might be the case when he's talking about women not talking in churches and, and uh, that, that subject there might be an example of it too, where he's not saying what he believes, he's saying what other people are saying and then he then he's, uh, refutes it. Uh, but um, I, I think if more people, I, I hope everybody's listening now, you go to my playlist, uh, was Paul a diatribalist, prosopopoeia, and, and, and so you can understand how Paul uses this as if it's an oratory technique. And I do believe uh, that he used it at least in a couple of cases. Uh, and if Mike, if you can, if you know a lot more cases, I'd love to point them out to me. Um, but let's go on. Uh, Brother Jason, do you have anything to say about this verse before we go to the, the next verse? I have those verses when you guys are done. Okay. Brother Jason. You still there? Sorry, yeah, I'm. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was uh, trying to click say on. about the that for the Corinthians verse before we go into the second Corinthians verse. That I'm going to go to next. Um, I think I think we've covered it. I did want to mention that what what didn't have power, and I think the Bible makes very clear, are the idols. The idols themselves, they don't speak. They're dumb. They don't move. They they have to be fastened to the floor, etc. The idols didn't have any power. But what uh, Renee is saying is correct about the dark spirits that exist. They do have some power. Now, it doesn't compare to the power of God, but they do have some power. And it's a little difficult to see that nowadays because it's 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 so underground now. 
Um, people don't worship Satan out in the open and it's getting, it's getting more prevalent. They're getting braver. Uh, but you know, they don't, they don't have their, their, um, you know, except in movies and TV, sometimes they don't have actual rituals happening where people can see them and the, the power isn't what it used to be as far as it being out in the open. That's all. Okay. Well, let, uh, Renee, if you want to say more about that before I go to the next verse, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to show those verses exactly. And, and Mike is absolutely right. The idol itself is nothing. It's dumb. It can't hear. It can't see. But these things were representations of actual entities. And there's a verse in Exodus that says, uh, this is the Lord, for I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both men and beasts, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. He's showing up these principalities and powers that they worship uh, to show that their power is nothing. All right. In Psalm 82, God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judgeth among the gods. Little G. How long will you judge unjustly? And except, see, these were the angelic entities that were uh, supposed to be uh, the watchers overseeing mankind. And they were not judging correctly. How long will you judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? Say law, defend the poor and the fatherless, do justice to the afflicted and needy, deliver the poor and needy, rid them out of the hand of the wicked. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk in darkness. All the foundations are, of course, I have said, ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high, but ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit all nations. So he's telling these entities that they are going to die like men. They are going to become mortal. First Timothy, the spirit of speech speaketh expressly that in the latter days, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And so there are these literal entities that preach doctrines uh, of devils. Uh, they really are preaching false doctrine. These devils are like uh, forbidding to marry and stuff like that. They influence men to be representatives of the devils. So um, Mike and I talked about this before. He seemed, I don't want to put words in his mouth, that he didn't believe in literal spiritual angelic entities or uh, demonic spirits. So let me ask him then because I think that's where he used to be. I don't know where he is now. All right. Well, we're going to go to the next verse, but Mike, before we do, at least can you state your position for yourself so that we know, we know what yours. I, I think Renee characterized reasonably accurately my position. Um, I, I believe in one God and I'm, I guess I can say agnostic as far as anything else goes. I've s never seen any evidence of it. I think things such as Elijah, um, the the passage there with the, the prophets of Baal, I think the point of that was to demonstrate Baal didn't exist. He wasn't real. Um, I think that there's this is something that actually happens repeatedly in the Old Testament of God saying, there's only one God, I'm it. Um, the rest of these things aren't real. Uh, th that's interesting. I, uh, I, my first thought is that uh, I think you may be right regarding Baal or some of these uh, cases that we can find in the Bible like that. But um, are, would you also take it so far that you, you, this, we don't fight against flesh and blood, but against principalities? Do you believe in, in the principalities at least that that evil demonic forces are do exist? I think what we fight against are, are I would put, I would rephrase that word slightly as principles. I think that we have principles such as the, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which is law, which is religion, which is, and I, I want to go back to something Renee said earlier regarding witchcraft. My definition of witchcraft is anything that is a performance based religion. You do something to get something. Um, and that's my own personal, uh, way of interpreting that something is witchcraft. So for me, law of attraction is witchcraft. Word faith is the same exact thing, except with a, a Christianese label on it. And it's witchcraft. Yes. I think they're all witchcraft. They're all performance-based religion. They're, yeah. all, they're all saying, you know, say the right things or do the right things. And that's the, 
the um, thing that you get. And we see as far as that passage about, uh, you know, the, the angel, the angel of light, the messenger of righteousness. What's that saying is, is this is going to be a religious leader. You know, it's going to be a religious leader. He's going to look like he thinks he's he's going to look like he's presenting a case of righteousness, but it's going to be works. It's going to be witchcraft. That's what it's going to be. It's going to be it's going to be a messenger of righteousness because he's going to say, here's how you do good. Do good to get good. And that's going to that's to me is witchcraft. I agree. Because to me, the message is that that uh, that your your value is inherent is intrinsic. God loves you as you are and not I, I disagree with that. You know, God loves you as you are, but not enough to let you stay that way. I, I've actually had my own arguments with God of damn it why won't you change me you know and and you know that's my own struggle i agree with mike but i wanted to give him the biblical definition of principality it is actually a ruling spirit over a specific area that's what a principality is they're rulers of darkness they are spiritual wickedness in high places these are literal entities and i agree with everything you just said that witchcraft is twisting god's word in a performance based the word of faith all of it is is witchcraft i agree with everything you said on that but i have to respectfully disagree that these are literal spiritual yeah. entities um uh, yeah i'm I, i'm certainly on uh, the side that uh there are actual literal demonic spirits uh, that exist and that are against us. Yeah. Uh, rather than idealizing them as you put them, uh, as you're phrasing it, Brother Mike, but that's fine. Uh, it's clear in Daniel. Agree. We don't have to agree on, on that, but if we, either way, uh, these things are uh, bad and we want to, <laughs> we want to get victory over them. Uh, let me ask Brother Jason to comment on this portion here. This is, the, this is the last portion of scriptures I found that anybody was using to prop up the argument against Christians practicing the holy of Halloween. So Brother Jason, you go first on this one. It's 2 Corinthians 6 verses 14 through 17. Uh, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers? For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Bilal? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And, and what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Oh, there's one more if in Ephesians we'll go over next. But for that, uh, that ver those verses there in the Second Corinthians, uh, Brother Jason, want to give us your thoughts on that? Yeah, absolutely. And I think this this brings it home again. Uh, uh, in modern day terms, it's not a good idea for a Christian to marry a practicing witch, whether it be a black witch or a white witch or anything else. That, that's a good example. And it's just, it's only one example. In other words, it, it, uh, some people take this verse, the, at least the first part, the, the, uh, the verse 14, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. And they, they think that that means you're not supposed to have uh, unsaved friends. I think in my, this is my opinion based on what I, uh, have read and what you just read that that particular verse refers to uh, uh, being married or or being very very close in in some kind of uh, 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 covenant relationship with someone that isn't on the same page. Um, I would use the example of the the yoke thing is is an example of two oxen. Uh, if one's going in one direction, the other's going the the field's not going to get plowed. Um, that's what I think that part is about. And again, it goes back to the same thing. Uh, uh, someone that worships Christ and that is washed in the blood should not be married to or in a uh, covenant relationship with someone that worships idols. I mean, it's, it's right in the verses. It uses the actual word idols, 
And then at the end of the verse that you read, it says, do not touch the unclean thing. What is the unclean thing? It's anything that is of not, not of Christ. In other words, idols is a good example of that. Anything that's involved with idol worship is a good example. Those are unclean, unclean things. Um, that's where I stand on that. Okay. Thank well, you. Uh, there's, uh, there's quite a bit of content in those verses there. Got a lot of points, but I, I'd like, Brother, uh, Brother Mike, uh, your thoughts on those verses. I put them here in the, the side private chat area. If you, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but it's 2 Corinthians 6, 14 through 17. Could you zero in on this portion here that says, uh, and, and be ye separate separate from them um i'm not i i really have to take dig deeper into this passage to to get a better feel from it i'm not entirely certain that it's even necessarily um a position that he's promoting as opposed to the position that he's stating that he's about to respond to um i just know that my own personal way of thinking about this this idea that I, I feel like there's a lot of unfortunate ways that the passage of, of saying to be separate and be not unequally yoked is is had some really unfortunate results in in practice because we're supposed to the commandment is to love one another and i think that there are instances where maybe there's wisdom in in not being involved in in certain situations but i the way that in my mind as as far as a practical like how can the people watching this apply this and and use it is to look at being unequally yoked as being where you're on the weaker end um so to me it's not even about who 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 these other people are like whatever this other is it's more about are you the weaker party or the stronger party because in helping people, you need to be the stronger party, not the weaker party. I'm thinking of a passage somewhere where it says something about like not being taken into the temptation with those that you're, you're trying to help out. Um, you know, you have to be the stronger party. So to me, it's not, um, not exactly perfect to say uh, the idea of unequal yoke. You, you should actually be unequally yoked because you should be the stronger party. But more like unequally yoked, like you're the one being pulled around by whoever you're yoked with. It should be a, a case where you're the stronger party because if somebody's in that pit and, and needs to be pulled out, you need to be the one that can pull them out. You, you can't be the party that's going to just fall down in there with them and be, you know, be two people lost in the mire. Um, you need to be the one that can actually pull them out of it. And so to me, the idea of, of, being a separatist is that's what Pharisee actually means. It's, it, it's, it means to be a separatist. Um, Pharaz means uh, separate or breach. Um, and it all, it also relates to Zoroastrian roots where the practitioners of Zoroastrianism were called Farsis, but uh, that, that gets off on another topic. But I think like being unequally yoked is kind of, it, it kind of gets interpreted in a way that's wrong where it actually should be unequal because you should be part either yourself or as a group with your fellowship, a, the stronger party that is, that is the yoke fellow that as, as Jesus said, you know, yoke up with me. Cause uh, you know, I make it, I, you know, I'm the one taking all the burden. You should be able to, whoever you're yoked with be the one able to take the burden and not the one being pulled around by whoever it is. I've, I've never heard it uh, unequally yoked expressed uh, in, in difference in uh, power. Um, I've always thought the unequally yoked uh, being that you're of the same mind, uh, that we're, we believe the same thing. Uh, but I, I wanted to talk just for a moment about the other part of the, these verses that says, uh, um, wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate. Uh, so applying this to the Halloween, you know, we, we go in these, these verses don't, I don't think they're really about Halloween, but these are verses that people use to say, don't participate with Halloween. So that's why we're, we're discussing them tonight. But uh, when it says to be separate, um, well, there, we have kind of a, 
a balancing act to do as a Christian, don't we? We're, we're supposed to uh, not cover our light. We're supposed to put it on the tabletop. We got to be the light of the world. You know, we got to be in the world so that we can share the gospel and, you know, don't hide ourselves just in our own little community. So we got to be among them. We, we, you know, we can't become monks and, and be monastic about our Christianity. Uh, but then on the other hand, in verses like this, is, it says separate from, from certain people. Uh, so I would say that if you're if you did know some witches, <laughs> you know, you could go to them and witness them, try to help them. But you don't you don't participate in it with them. And uh, that's how I would say this verse would apply to um, Halloween. But Sister Renee. Amen to both y'all. Uh, first of all, I want to agree with all of it. And Mike, what you said, uh, absolutely true. This whole, I'm so holy, I can't associate with those atheists. And the, that is not what this means. Again, when he's talking about uh, being yoked together with devils, we got to remember, he's talking about literal temples where people are sacrificing to literal demons. People, people don't seem to understand that this was really happening. Again, temple prostitution. It's mentioned in the other Corinthian book. Uh, so he's saying, don't go in there to their demonic temples and bow down and do what the pagans do because what fellowship has light with darkness? You can't serve the devil and the Lord. And so what Mike was saying is absolutely true. And what you just said is supported here. This is in Matthew 5. Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, put it on a can, but on a candlestick and giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men so that they may see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. And then in second Corinthians, be not unequally yoked with unbelievers. And he's talking specifically about these demonic temples. What agreement has the temple of God with idols for you're the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate and touch not the unclean thing. So I will receive you. So it's literally they're going into idolatry temples. This is really happening back then. Remember in Ephesians, great is Diana. You know, and, and it's interesting because Diana is represented by that fallen star, which is the Kaaba stone. And it's just a mess. It's the same thing. What do they say? Allah Akbar. Great, great, great is Allah. So it's the same moon star paganism. But uh, Mike is absolutely right. We are. We, you don't set yourself like, oh, we're too good. We we just we can't be around unbelievers. Well, who's going to be a light to them? Who's and, and he also mentioned, I, I think you did, too about when we help a person out of it, we need to be stronger. And Paul says that, he says, you know, if a brother's overtaken by a sin, you're supposed to help him out. But if you have the same weakness, don't do it, lest you fall with him instead of you bringing him back. So we are supposed to go to places of darkness to be the light, to be the salt, to preserve. So it, it's wrong when they say, oh, don't go here and don't go there because those people. No, Paul's talking about a literal temple for demons, that they're worshiping idols. So people forget the context. It, he's really saying you do not get yoked with those people. Don't go performing these idolatry rituals. That's what he's saying, literally. So what you guys said, absolutely true. Well, let me say one more thing before the last verse here. No, I'll give you a chance right at this, Mike. Uh, the, uh, Jesus gave us so many examples uh, to, to follow, to emulate. I mean, my favorite is, is washing the feet of the apostles. But uh, also the example of 
he went those places. He he went where he the other religious people would never go. And he's hanging out with prostitutes and tax collectors. So he did uh, practice what uh, he preached with in terms of being the light of the world. He you can't put your light under the table. You got to let the light shine. He so that means you got to go where the sinners are. We have a ministry here in Las Vegas, by the way. For those of you who did not put two and two together, Sin City Preacher lives in Sin City. <laughs> That's Las Vegas. And uh, in Las Vegas, there is a ministry here called S Strippers for Jesus. And what they do is they are former strippers who are born again, and they go and hang out with the strippers in the strip joints and, and witness to them. They're not stripping, though. Now, it's one thing to go out and, and witness to them and tell them that Jesus loves them. He paid for their sins or stuff. But if they were to go in there and start stripping with them again, then we probably have a problem there. But but they're not they're not participating in it, but they're in it because that's the only way they can witness to these people. OK, uh, Brother Mike. Yeah, I wanted to say um, that uh, Renee's talking about going to temples and, and that sort of thing. And it kind of made me think, I, I can't help but wonder without, you know, doing a, a further dig in here, how, to what extent we could be talking about that the temple of not, that you shouldn't be going to is, uh, is the temple in Jerusalem, as in, you know, where they were practicing the law of Moses. Because if you think like in the book of Hebrews, the entire book of Hebrews is a systematic dismantling of the law and Specifically, I'm thinking of Hebrews 10, 26, that people, I generally see this uh, explained in, in a number of different ways. But one thing I, I have yet to ever see is that when it says that there's no more sacrifice for sin, it's actually saying stop making sacrifices. Um, so everyone focuses on the other part of the verse about what's, what, what's the sin, what, you know, is there, and, but the, the whole point is that it doesn't have anything to do with you can out sin the sacrifice. It has to do with stop making sacrifices. Don't do it anymore. And that's actually what it's saying. Um, and so I can't help but wonder if this a bit about, you know, being separate might actually have to do with don't go to the temple, just which is the same point that the book of Hebrews is making. Stop going to the temple. Stop making sacrifices um, because they were being infiltrated by people that were saying, you know, you still they were trying to actually even go so far as converting Gentiles to Judaism. But as far as Jews getting free, they're also saying you can't stop being a Jew. Um, you can't you can't abandon this law of Moses that we're that we're under. And so the New Testament is filled with all kinds of different examples and, and illustrations as to why the law of Moses is something they needed to let go of. And there there's different illustrations such as, you know, a wife is free from her husband. If the husband's died, um, there's one of the devices the New Testament uses over and over again is, OK, well, before that. Before that thing that you're fixated upon, there was this other thing, and that has never been voided by this thing that you're fixated upon. So it says, you know, that Abraham was uh, was in, in, in the covenant before he was circumcised. So before that thing that you're fixated upon, there was this other thing, and that was never voided. Um, the law didn't come for 400 years, but that didn't disannul the, uh, that. Um, you have all these things, references to like before the foundation of the earth. It keeps going back, and it says, okay, yeah, well, before that thing, there was this other thing, and that never got voided. And, and they um, forget that those pagans, you know, they were it's old habits die hard, man. Those pagans were also sacrificing to their, you know, little gods like the god of war and the god of love and fertility to get their wife pregnant. They talk about that. So in, in addition to that, I love that you brought up Jerusalem temple because, yeah, he's like, let us not lay in the foundation of repentance from dead works. You got it right, because if they willfully sin by rejecting that once for all sacrifice and keep trying to sacrifice other animals instead, they trample the son of God underfoot, despite the spirit of grace. You said it, man. Let me say that um, I'm, I'm always happy when people bring up uh, the book of Hebrews. Uh, Renee, you, you did a great job when you're talking about your uh, rightly dividing your recent video on that subject. And um, I 
if if I was had uh, the the job of saying the Bible's going to be destroyed, but Luke, you can save three books in the Bible. You have to pick three books from the Bible. All the other books will not exist anymore except for three that you pick. Uh, I've said before my favorite and the most important book I believe is the Gospel of John. The next book I would pick is the book of Galatians and then the book of Hebrews. If a person had those three books and nothing else, I'd be very, very, uh, that they, they could understand the book of Hebrews if they're looking at it through the eyes of John and and Galatians. You know, if you don't, if you don't have John and Galatians to look at Hebrews, you can get really screwed up on it. But uh, so anybody who's watching, I, I think focusing on those three books in that order it would be very, very helpful for a person to understand not only who Jesus is, uh, how we get saved, and what we better not do is add religion to, to faith in Jesus. And, and that includes you know, the, the Jewish people who are trying to add Judaism, the religion saying, you've got to practice Judaism, temple worship, animal sacrifices, in Galatians, it's circumcision and the Sabbath and all that. Um, okay, so I'm trying to keep this within the time frame we normally run this program. So the last verse, and I'll ask uh, Renee, you go first up on this one here. This is Ephesians 6.12, and uh, that's we mentioned it earlier. But now let's apply the verse uh, to the subject of Halloween, because uh, these verses I'm bringing up are verses that I found that uh, some Christians use to say, Christians are forbidden from participating in Halloween, and these are the verses that they use to support that position, even though the first two vis verses I offer tonight tells us that uh, that uh, everything is uh, is uh, lawful for us, but it may not be profitable, and, and, and we shouldn't judge people if, on any holidays they want to celebrate. So it's clearly stated, and then they use these verses to say, no, don't practice Halloween in any way. This one is Ephesians 6, 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness, wickedness in high places. We talked about it a little bit, but go ahead, says to Renee. Sorry there. Uh, yeah, so... <clears throat> the verse we're talking about, you want to apply this to Halloween. Uh, well, you know, like I say, I, I really, uh, this Samhain thing was never uh, like a religious thing until the Catholics brought it into it. You know, they tried to bring pagan practices and pagans into the Christian church instead of bringing them to Christ and how he wants to be worshiped in spirit and truth. They just kept their, uh, all their many little gods they worshiped and put saints names on top of them. The same thing that voodoo and hoodoo does. They take their demonic African, uh, uh, spirits names and put a name of a Catholic saint on top of it. And they'll take like the statue of Zeus and, and say it's St. Peter. So people are kissing his feet. And so uh, we wrestle not against flesh and blood and against principalities, powers, against rules of darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. Uh, so it is actually these entities that are uh, persuading people uh, and teaching falsely. And I would agree with Mike that that teaching is righteousness but it's man's righteousness. So while people are looking at ghouls and goblins and over witchy looking people and people that talk with their hands are doing secret hand symbols like me, instead of looking for the place, see Satan wants you to think he looks like a ghoul because when he shows up as an angel of light, you won't recognize him. And he's one of his greatest tricks. Paul talks about how we're not ignorant of his devices and his subtlety, right? Well, one of his greatest tricks, and he does this with these fallen angel, alien, ascended masters, whatever they're claiming to be. And they will say, hey, look at those little gray things, those reptilian things, whatever. They, these are the evil ones. 
We're the good ones. We'll protect you. So they play good cop, bad cop. So either way, you're tr choosing Satan. Like you're choosing Satan. So they make it look like, hey, we're the good ones. Those guys are your enemies. Meanwhile, they're working together. But here's the thing with Halloween. People are so uh, up in arms and all twisted because of this overtly demonic death thing that they don't see <laughs> the, the wickedness of, uh, uh, that shows up as a righteous, as righteousness, work salvation. You know, things that seem right. What does it say about the doctrines of devils? Forbidding to marry, forbidding meats, you know, when everything's supposed to be received with thanksgiving. And God makes all things clean. See, I, I liked what uh, I think it was Jason was saying. You don't out sin the blood of Christ. That's not what it's talking about. See, when Jesus met a leper, Jesus didn't catch leprosy. He cleansed them. They didn't make him unclean. He made them clean and whole. And it's the same thing. When you come into this, you know, you're on Halloween or whatever you're tripping out about. Your light is so much stronger than that darkness. But I fear that people are so deceived in looking for overt evil that it, they don't see the evil that disguises itself as godliness. So, uh, and I think that is so dangerous because he's slick and people don't see it. They just, you guys get what I'm saying about looking for overt evil and then not seeing his greatest trick, you know, that they, they, they preach uh, man's righteousness and people eat it up. Itching ears, love works. Abstain from this. Taste not, touch not, handle not. I think. And that's the whole thing with Halloween. They think, oh, it's so evil. But he that's within us is greater than he that's in the world. Why are people tripping out in fear? Perfect love casts out fear. You know, I think they minimize the power of God. Mm, amen. Uh, Brother Jason, why don't you go next in case you have to run off because uh, of your appointment? Oh, that's great. Thank you. Yes. I, first of all, I want to agree with everything, uh, Renee just said, uh, it was Mike that said that, but I, uh, I still agree with it. I, I just want to make sure and give credit to who said the right thing. Um, he, he said outrunning the, the blood of Christ. It's a paraphrase obviously, but, uh, I want to agree with that. Um, definitely because, uh, it, and I, Renee, I've heard you say this a thousand times or more on your show about, about that. Um, where people uh, say, oh, you know, the hyper grace or whatever, then, um, the, you know, they want to sin so much that grace uh, will abound. You know, it's like a license to sin. I get so tired of hearing that. You really, really rail against that. And we all should. Um, and getting, getting, there's, there's no way that anyone that really is in Christ connected to the vine is going to sin more so that God's grace can cover them more. It's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, and so, uh, speaking of the verse that was read, uh, this is a great verse. And I wanted to say that an example of this, uh, is found in Daniel where Daniel, uh, was praying and um, when the angel came uh, in answer to his prayer, he makes it very, very clear. I'm sorry it took me so long. I'm paraphrasing here, but sorry it took me so long to get to you, but I was held up by the prince of Persia. Uh, so this is an example of a principality, a power, a ruler of darkness, um, regional princes in every area on, on this, uh, the, the place that we live. They're in charge of these things. They do exist. Um, and lastly, uh, what Renee said about, uh, the mixing thing. One of the things I mentioned earlier was the angel cards and things like that have, that have started to infiltrate some churches, you know, there, there it's, it's no different than, uh, consulting a medium. You can call it whatever you want. It's being repackaged. The new age is being repackaged and infiltrating some churches. It's just as wicked as the original. That's what we're talking about. Um, and it's hap it's happening, uh, in, in, in a lot of different places. And then, so when it says come out of her, 
you know, I agree with the point of being salt and light, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we're supposed to attend a church like that and stay in that church when it's when it's been turned over to that that kind of behavior. Uh, the best thing to do, in my opinion, would be to uh, if you have friends that you're connected to that are in a church like that, is to continue to pour into them, and you know, try to try to show them the, the right way uh, through the Holy Spirit. Um, that's all I had to say about that. And, and before I head out, I just want to say thank you, uh, brother Luke for, uh, letting me come on the channel. I really enjoyed that. I enjoyed getting some time with Renee, Mike, I, uh, appreciate, uh, your comments as well. And, uh, I would like to be a part of anything. If you, if you, uh, ever want an extra, uh, panel member or whatever, if I'm not busy, I would love to come on the channel again and, and do more stuff. Um, brother Luke, you did mention, uh, maybe doing an interview, uh, or something, um, uh, you know, bio thing. I'm, I'm interested in doing that whenever we can uh, clear that up on your schedule. And I'm just uh, blessed to be a part of this. Uh, and uh, I think it's a great topic and I think uh, we've covered it very well. Um, as brother Luke was saying, I, I, I uh, happen to have a tr uh, airport trip. I do transportation on the side, uh, pick people up in my own vehicle and stuff. I uh, drove Uber and Lyft and I do black car and stuff like that. So one of the things I do is uh, I have about seven, seven or eight people that uh, use me to take them to and from the airport sometimes and some other things. So uh, I have a, a plane landing at eight, uh, 1140 my time, Eastern standard time. And I just have to make sure I get to the airport in time. So um, anyway, uh, I want to say goodbye to the chat room. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you for uh, inviting me um, again. And I hope we can do it again. Love you guys in, in Christ Jesus. Thank you so much, Renee. I'd love to, uh, talk to you as well. Thanks again, Brother Luke, and uh, you guys in the chat room. Have a great evening. Love you, Jason. So good to have you. Good to have you there, brother. All right. Thank Thanks, you. guys. Yes, it was a, it was a great pleasure uh, having fellowship with you tonight, Brother Jason. I'm sure we'll have more opportunities. And same with you, RL. Uh, every time I have a chance to talk to you, I enjoy it. But uh, let me. Um, uh, say something before I forget. I I got an email or, or no, there was a comment from somebody, um, Dana, uh, Sister Dana made a comment I, on one of my videos or maybe Renee's video or somewhere, but uh, she's having heart surgery in the morning, tomorrow morning. And uh, so I, I she, Told her I would pray for her, and I also bring it to everybody's attention and ask everybody to pray for her. And I've been through heart surgery a year ago, and I just want her to know that uh, it, it's fantastic what these surgeons are able to do now, and I'm sure it's going to uh, be very successful in the recovery that she'll go through. I'm sure that'll go well. But let's let's all of us rem remember to pray for Sister Dana. I also have a friend of mine from. He's been a close friend of mine ever since college, and uh, he's not a believer. I've been witnessing to him now for over 30 years, but he's getting very, very close, I think. And he's uh, he's at a point in his life where he's, he's a little bit older than me, and, and he's got a lot of health problems, but he also has a heart problem, and he has to be going and have his heart shocked to try to get it running right again. And, and so he's, he's, of course, worried about that. And, I told him I'd pray for him. So I ask everybody to, to pray for Mike and Dana that the, their heart issues will be um, healed. And the, the, regarding this question, this verse here, the principalities and wrestling, all that, I, I, I want to go back to what we were saying earlier. Uh, Renee mentioned uh, C.S. Lewis and uh, uh, then also we got uh, J.R. Tolkien and, and uh, what was the one with Harry Potter. We all, I can add Anne Rice to the list too. Uh, she writes a lot about witches and demons and devils and stuff. I've read a lot of her books. They're very entertaining and thought provoking. Uh, but and, and then she said now she's, she believes and, uh, and is a Christian. But Brother Luke? Yes. I'm sorry. May I interrupt you just real quick? Go ahead. I wanted to say that uh, Renee was talking about C.S. Lewis earlier in the Narnia Chronicles and whatnot, and these nit the same nitpicky people that that attack uh, in the chat rooms and do these videos, they go against him as well. 
they 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 say that he wasn't a you know real Christian and he was in in into this and that and it was he was a false prophet and whatnot. And they use uh, his fantasy writing of the Narnia Chronicles as an example because in those books there's magic and witchcraft, just based on it being a fantasy. That's all I want to say. I want to just add that into what you were just saying uh, to tie into what Renee said. That's all. Uh, thank you. Uh, well, uh, I've only read two of his books, and uh, and I do see some subtle issues with his doctrine, but. Uh, I, I believe he, he probably was uh, is a Christian, and uh, um, but mere Christianity is a classic. I mean, I, I don't think anybody can find fault with that. This book here is by C.S. Lewis, and it pertains to this subject tonight. It's called the Screw Tape Letters, and it's a really interesting book. But in this book, he um, he puts forth the idea, and I don't know if. Mike and Renee, well, I think I know what Mike would say about it, but I'm not sure if Renee um, agrees or not, but a lot of people think that we have guardian angels. There's an angel assigned to each of us to help us, but, and also, as C.S. Lewis says, that, uh, that there's a demon assigned to each person to try to prevent them from uh, believing, and if they do believe, to try to prevent them from being fruitful, and that's what this book is about. Screw tape is the name of a demon that happens to be assigned to the, the main character in the book. And so that, that's, uh, I find that very interesting uh, that uh, um, it pertains to these principalities and the, these, uh, in this verse here is these powers. And um, uh, I do take that part of scripture uh, to be literal, not symbolic. I want to hear a little bit more about what, how Mike understands it, but I do think that there really are these evil demonic forces that are trying to prevent us from being saved and and failing in that uh, to prevent us from um, uh, serving well so uh, okay brother Mike uh, get um, get your thoughts on the verse here in Ephesians and anything else well I'll stick to the verse because I haven't read the screw tape letters since I was a child so I don't really remember what was in it um, but as far as uh, this passage in Ephesians 6, um, going back to verse 10, it's finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rules of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. And it goes on from there with the uh, continuing analogy of, of armor. And I actually wrote up a uh, fairly detailed uh, commentary on my take on this whole full armor of God thing, but uh, I'll just go over, I'll, I think I'll copy and paste that into the, the comments um, afterwards, but I'll just hit real quick some of the key points, which is that what this is expressing just before this, it's talking about, uh, you know, how to being good to people, a manner of treating people. And so, I think this is continuing with the, the idea of saying, you know, don't fight people. Um, and so that's one of the key parts here is we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, etc. is that, you know, people are not the enemy here because a lot of this could be interpreted in a, in a way that if you're not getting that part of it, you're going to say, you know, let's, let's sharpen our swords and, and go to war. Um, and I think what it's saying here is, is that this is about viewpoints. This is about ways of seeing things. This is about things that are behind the scenes. This is about uh, thought processes. This is about things that people are, are, don't even understand what is driving them. And, you know, I know that certainly Renee and, and others here would say that's the, that's the spiritual principalities that are driving things. But nevertheless, the point is that the person that you're standing face to face with and disagreeing with over some principle is not the is not your enemy. OK, so the person standing in front of you is not your enemy. That's a person. Your enemy is this false doctrine. Your enemy is the religious mindset. Your enemy is is the do to get mindset. The enemy is works religion. Um, 
it's and so on. So the enemy is not the person standing in front of you. The person standing in front of you is the person standing in front of you. And you need to be kind to that person. You need to be the light of that world. I'd like to say that, uh, you know, going back to as uh, Renee referenced earlier, I like to phrase that as uh, let your let your love so shine before others that they may see your kindness and realize that there's a good God in heaven and that the goodness of God leads to repentance. That's what leads to the mind change. So the way that you get people out of this and lead them to that mind change is through showing them the goodness of God. And we are the ambassadors of Christ. The commandment is to love one another. We are the representatives. I, I like to say it this way is that, um, People that that evil is the universal religion. Everybody believes in evil. Nobody would say I'm an atheist on on the on whether evil exists. In fact, there's a bad religion song that says, "I know as sure uh, uh, I forget the lyrics exactly, but it's something like I know as sure as the day turns into night that evil exists." Uh, oh, that's it. I know that evil exists as sure as day turns into night. Um, you know, so nobody is agnostic or atheist about whether evil exists, but what people don't necessarily believe is whether good exists or whether God is good. And we are the ones that are supposed to actually be the good. And therefore, you know, so the, the, the principle is be the goodness of God to others, therefore proving it exists. And then that's what will lead to the mind change. Also going back to this idea of the full armor of God is I think that, you know, it says to put on the full armor of God, but I want to emphasize that I don't think that it's talking about, you know, being in, uh, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And it's talking about basically being in his hand, be, uh, the, the way that it's talking about power is that it's actually talking about being in his hand and, you know, you can't get it. Nothing can be delivered out of his hand. And so the idea of putting on the armor is, is not one of, of like struggling and straining to put on armor, like David trying to put on Saul's armor, but in, in recognizing that you're wrapped in that cloak of righteousness, that you're wrapped in it, that you are in that hand and that you're in that fortress that you, you know, that you're in the mighty fortress that the Lord is. And to, to recognize that as your protection against these attacks, and then the attacks are going to be, uh, you know, the, the kinds of things like, oh, well, you're just saying that, you know, that's, that's a license to sin or, you know, you just, uh, you just want to uh, create a God in your own image that's, that that uh, doesn't mind the things that you're doing. You know, whatever these attacks are going to be. You know, if you were really if you were really saved, uh, you would do this or that. Or, you know, you'd have the proof. You'd have the the, the back loaded works that the Calvinists always want to put on you. There's going to be these attacks that you're going to come against, and uh, and understanding being wrapped in that robe, robe of righteousness and knowing your righteousness in Christ is going to be the armor of God that protects you against all these attacks. And again, it's not the person standing in front of you. That's the enemy. It's, um, it's going to be whatever's behind that. That is the, the enemy. Amen. Mike. Hey, Luke. Mm -hmm. Did, did you, uh, I, I have never heard anybody else say that, that the armor is already on us. And then in our mind, we must put it on. We must acknowledge what we have and who we are in Christ. That's why he said, take on you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and have done all to stand. Having your loins girt about with truth, the breastplate of righteousness, God's righteousness. If you watch these like exorcism things with the Catholics, I had one Catholic priest said, I'm not holy enough. I have to leave that to these very holy men. And I'm thinking, no, 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 no. See, that's how Satan gets in. That's how he attacks you because you're looking at how righteous you are. You should be like, no, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. There, you can't come against the living God that dwells within me. It has nothing to do with my righteousness. And your feet shall with the preparation of the gospel of peace, taking the shield of faith, Wherewith you should be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and most of all the helmet of salvation. We and I keep telling people this helmet of salvation is our full assurance of faith. And it's interesting. The Catholics call it the sin of presumption when God says he counts it to us as righteousness. 
because we have trusted in our God who is our salvation. And Mike is right. We don't literally put it on. It's already on us. We just have to acknowledge it. So we're putting it on in our mind. Remember he said, renew your mind daily. And uh, if more people knew who they are in Christ, that's why this whole license to sin is nonsense. We know who we are in Christ, you know, and uh, when you uh, look only to God's righteousness, the truth of the gospel, what Christ did and how as we are, so are, as he is, so are we in this world. That's how God sees us as he sees his son. You know, then we would be able to stand against these lies and deception because the only only weapon Satan has against a born again believer is his ability to deceive you about who you are in Christ. That's his only weapon. So I, I just want to say bravo, Mike, for that. Yeah, uh, amen and amen. I I don't know how sometimes uh, um, something like that is uh, missed by all of us all the time that we, uh, I mean, obviously put on the helmet of salvation. Of course we have that on. We don't need to put it on because we're believers. We already have that. So let's apply that to the, to the rest of it. Um, yeah, very good point and something for us to all remember. I know that I, uh, um, I would always struggle and I, I've run street preaching over a thousand times. And I remember it, it took about two years before the dread went away. I, I think about it the, the night before thinking I'm going to preach tomorrow. And somehow I'd be worrying about it all day long. And this kind of dread and, and uh, driving over there uh, and then get, drop, parking my car all this time, I'm, I, I know that I'm under spiritual attack. And I'm praying I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The devil flees from me in the name of Jesus. And greater is, is he who is in me than he's in the, the world. And, and, um, but I think, I think it was... Uh, Brother Jason, that on, on his program the other day, I heard him talking about what is uh, courage? Uh, courage is not the absence of fear. If, if, if you don't have any fear, that's not courage. Courage is when you have fear, but you're willing to go ahead anyway in spite of the fear. Well, I I was courageous and that I was afraid to do, to preach. And, and but I forced myself to do it. And every single time I opened my mouth, the fear was gone immediately. But leading up to that point, I had this, this, this fear. And I, I know that that wasn't, I, I don't know it really. I, I, but I, I think that that was spiritual attack I was under. I don't think that was something I was creating in my own mind. I believe that uh, I was under demonic attack and they didn't want me to go street preaching and did everything to cause this dread in me so I wouldn't do it. One day they succeeded out of a thousand days. One day I drive them over there and I get over there and just turn around. Before I before I parked the car, I turned around. It got the best of me. But uh, all the other times I went ahead and did it anyway. But so I've uh, I'm very much aware of the spiritual battle. And of course we still deal with it. Even if we're not street preaching, we still have to deal with these these things. Um, but that's a very good point, Brother Mike. That uh, I hope everyone understand that we already have all this full armor of God on. Um, well, <clears throat> we, we want to uh, end this program about 11 p.m. Eastern time because I don't want to be too late for the people back east. It was already beyond that time. So let's uh, sum this up now. Um, the first two verses discussed, uh, to me, uh, give no wiggle room out from the, from the uh, conclusion that we're free to practice, to celebrate Halloween if we want to. We're free not to do it. But we should not be judging other people whether they decide to do it or not. Don't judge them. And uh, you know, whether it is uh, beneficial to someone in some way or not, uh, that's, the, that's the question. 
uh, but we don't want it to take power over us. That's what we get from those uh, first two verses we talked about tonight. Then the other verses we talked about are verses I found that some Christians used to argue against Christians participating in Halloween, and I, I didn't find, in all of our discussing of those, I didn't find any anything in those verses that really applied to this, uh, applied to uh, doing pr uh, having a fantasy time where they're not really believing and practicing witchcraft. So um, my conclusion is that there's no reason for anybody to not be able to enjoy Halloween. As, uh, even adults now are getting back into it. They take out their kids. They don't just take them. They dress up too and kind of reliving their childhood's memories. Uh, so uh, I intended on going through uh, you know, the history and origin of how it all developed and so on. We didn't get into that much except what Renee mentioned, but that's not the most important thing. The most important thing for us is that uh, our audience, our congregation here, I believe most of us, or if not all of us, are all ready believers. So we need to understand uh, what the Bible has to tell us about this. So let me ask uh, um, Brother Mike first, uh, sum up your thoughts uh, about the, the discussion tonight, and then I'll have Renee fit, you know, close it out. Yeah, I just go back to the original point of the fact that it's it's that we have liberty in Christ, and liberty is not liberty if there's a yeah but. Um, you know, it's not really liberty uh, unless you're free to do something. Even I, I like to describe liberty as being the um, that you have the freedom to make a mistake, you have the freedom to be wrong. Um, and I think it's useful to think of it that way. And when you set up uh, a, a rule, then you yourself are also bound by that rule. Uh, and that's why the Bible repeats, repeatedly has passages saying that when you judge someone, you're now uh, part of that. You're, you're now subject to that standard as well. Um, I kind of, I like to think of a quick and easy illustration as that, uh, when you see an internet argument and someone acts like they've won the argument because somebody misspelled something and then in the process of proclaiming victory, they misspell something, you know, it's, it's, that's what I see with the uh, passages on, on being bound by your own judgment of, of another uh, also mirrors back to you. But the celebration of holidays is all about being able to have your liberty and, uh, you know, I'm reminded of the passage of saying that whoever uh, uh, honors a day, you know, and he honors it to the Lord, then that's great. And if he doesn't honor the day and doesn't it honor, you know, it doesn't honor it in honor of the Lord, then that's great. And I think one of the ir ironic things here is as I'm uh, promoting liberty and celebration of a holiday, I really don't care. To me, today is Wednesday. I mean, <laughs> so I'm the one who, who, you know, doesn't observe the day and gives thanks to the Lord. Um, you know, that's the way that I'm, I'm looking at it. I don't really have any participation. I don't have a dog in this race, so to speak. Uh, you know, let's all gamble <laughs> while we're at it. But, you know, I don't, I don't have a, I don't have any stake in this where, you know, I feel like I need to defend what I did tonight and, or any, you know, because I, I, didn't do anything. I, <laughs> I just sat at home and did my normal routine, just like it's any other day. Um, but we have that liberty. Amen. Uh, Renee, please sum up your thoughts on the discussion tonight. Sorry, I couldn't find the tab. <laughs> uh, I had a couple things here. All right. First of all, I'd like to say, who shall lay anything? Let me see. Let me pull this up here. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth, God that makes us righteous and holy. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation... Or holidays, 
or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword as is written for thy sake we are killed all the day long we are counted as sheep for the slaughter nay in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Nothing now, nothing in the future. So uh, regarding the Halloween thing, this is what I say. Like Mike said, I don't care, dude. I don't have to defend. I don't have a, a dog in the race, man. I just don't care. It just, I don't trip out. But uh, Roman says, who art thou that judgest another man's servant? See, what I do is between me and God. And I'm not hurting anybody if I choose to honor one day above another. To his own master he standeth or falleth. Yea, he shall be holding up, for God is able to make him stand. One man esteemeth one day above another. Another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. He that regardeth the day regardeth it unto the Lord. He that regardeth not the day to the Lord, he doth not regard it. So whatever you're doing, do it to him. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord. For he that giveth God thanks. And he that eateth not to the Lord, he eateth not and giveth God thanks. For none of us liveth to himself and no man dieth to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. Whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord for to this end Christ both died and rose and revived that he might be Lord both of the living and the dead. But why dost thou judge thy brother? Why dost thou set it not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. So then everyone shall give an account of himself to God. Let us not therefore judge one another anymore, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother, in his brother's way. I know and am persuaded by the Lord Jesus, there is nothing unclean in of itself, but to him that esteemeth anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. So I'll, I'll continue going. He's talking about a lot of things, eating and drinking or not eating and drinking and the, the thing is, is I answer to God. We all answer to God. The Holy Spirit is in us. And if you do anything against your own conscience, then it's sin. Now, if I do something in my liberty, I'm strong in the faith. I'm cool with it. But if you're weak in it, I'm going to try to respect you and not do it around you. Lest I make you stumble and feel uh, like you've done something wrong. And then if I convince you that it's not wrong and you do it, but in your conscience, you're like, but it is wrong. You are sinning. And I have made you sin because I made you stumble and do something against your conscience for whatsoever is not a faith is sin. So every man is persuaded in his own mind. We answer to God for these things. And uh, I, I like, like Mike, I, I have no dog in the race. I, I'm not trying to defend it. I'm just saying, who the sun sets free is free indeed. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, uh, adopted son of heaven. Uh, when we first started the program tonight, uh, you had a question about a different su subject and I asked you to hold on to it and, and um, we'll answer it some other time because tonight was for Halloween. Uh, but if you, uh, if you have that question, you can post it now in the chat room or um, or email it to me or post it on the video after it's uploaded and we'll be able to answer your question uh, this Sunday uh, when we have the Sunday broadcast, okay? Hey, Brother Luke, I forgot to tell you guys something. Speaking of taking victory over anything, like Mike always says, every knee's got to bow. Everything's got to bow down before Christ. I'd like to mention that some of my Christian friends gave candy with gospel tracts candy with little stamps with uh, Bible verses on them away. That is taking victory over something that you esteem as evil and using it to be a light to the world. So I, I wanted to confirm what you guys were saying earlier. Oh, wonderful. Okay. So uh, we're going to close the program for tonight. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, those who are watching and uh, those in the chat room, uh, I, I appreciate uh, Renee and Mike and Jason for uh, joining the, the panel discussion. So I hope everybody will join us every Wednesday.
for the Wednesday night Bible study and also join us on Sundays for the, the Sunday uh, program for the Church of the Eternally Secure. So thanks again, everybody, for participating and bless you all in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus.